have seen that the nobility in the Heian period were frequently obliged to cancel or to interrupt their trips because of certain unlucky omens and had to protect themselves from the misery announced by the Omyodo priests. However, this custom was not practical if they wished to lead normal lives. The most well-known ominous direction is northeast, but there are many others and they change, change regularly depending on the Omyodo and the Five Elements calendar. What could be done in order to carry on our activities despite these forbidden directions? In fact, Omyodo also provided several rescue plans that would help people to continue their trips. A man who wants to walk from point A to point B, if point B was situated in a forbidden direction as seen from point A, just has to convert this his trajectory by passing in another direction overnight before continuing his trip. In this way, he can escape risking the consequence of violating the forbidden direction. This process of converting forbidden directions was called katatagae in Japan. In Japanese literature of the Heian period, we can see many examples of this habit. In Makura no Soshi and Genji Monogatari, novels are sometimes described as being in the process of katatagae. Needless to say that this kind of unusual moving for a night of a novel person inspired authors to invent a love affair or other episode. Omyodo and the practice of the five elements were widespread in the Heian period when the imperial family and other noble other nobles had great influence in ruling the country. As time passed, the political power of the emperor was replaced by the military governor called the shogun, and Omyodo priests were in less and less demand. However, that does not mean that Japanese people in contemporary society have forgotten the practice of seeking harmony with their environment. A well-known example from the 1990s is the practice of Feng Shui philosophy, which is directly inspired by Yin and Yang and by Omyodo. The Feng Shui offers useful explanations and advice about how to position your furniture in your house, in which order, matching colors with others, how to renovate your house, etc. Theories proposing practical and wise ways to tidy up your room, to separate yourself from superfluous materials, have become quite popular too. Underlying these theories, there are of course the Feng Shui philosophy and Omyodo practice, because these rules or practical advice help you to find a harmonious way to live with others, with nature and furthermore in nature. The most important feature of Omyodo, Feng Shui, and other variations of the way, way of Wing and Yang is this is not a battle between good and bad forces, between the world of the dead and our lives, but this is the pursuit of a harmony between them. Omyodo does not try to find a victory over the bad and frightening enemies considered as others, but the peaceful coexistence with others. This other could be the spirit of our ancestors, climate conditions, or, or all sorts of daily problems with neighbors, colleagues, step families, and so on. In general, harmony is a very important notion for Japanese people's philosophy of life. It is very interesting to perceive that this notion of harmony has always been essential in Japan, even in ancient times, that is, back in the 7th century CE. So, this week, we have been exposed to quite a variety of subjects, with a common denominator which is, from today's perspective, the supernatural, the miraculous, the unusual. We hope you have learned a great deal about how these things work in various cultures and belief systems. Next week, 
our course will conclude with a case study in which many of the themes and phenomena of all these six weeks are combined. Mm -hmm.